Hi everyone and welcome back. On today's video, we're going to be removing part of the ash pan so we can restore it pretty much. This one's probably going to be remade because there's a lot of spots where you can see I can put my whole hand through here. It's rotten through completely. Um, what I want to do is go over how I kind of prep myself to remove one of these. I don't have the prints to this just yet, so some of this is going to be me figuring out how to remove nuts and which bolts to remove. Uh, the other side's already done. I pulled the sheet out, so I'm going to use a little bit of what I've learned from that on this, but I kind of want to walk everybody through quick what's involved in taking this side of the ash pan off. So I'm on, I'm on the fireman's side of the locomotive where I've already pulled the pan. Uh, this morning I removed the nuts for the brackets that hold the sides of the pan in place. Uh, I still have to remove the wheel arch part of the pan, and I'll show everybody how we do that on the other side. But this is kind of the end goal, is the whole pan's off, and we're going to be able to restore it and make it look really, really good. I'm back on the engineer side of the locomotive where the pan still is, and one of the things that I look for as I'm doing this stuff, and I've never done before, so for today we're going to drop this part of the pan, right? So I'm going to look and I see that this pan goes from here and runs about seven, eight feet all the way down to here. So when I drop it, I need to make sure that I have something underneath to catch because this is going to be heavy. More importantly, and this is the top tip for the episode, if you ever remove things like this, always leave a couple easy to get to nuts that you can remove last, that you can get everything set up, removed except two of the pieces of hardware, you can remove them and then easily drop it. If you leave, like let's say there's there's nuts underneath the pan, right? If I leave the nut underneath the pan is the last one I have to do, then with my bracing underneath, I have to go underneath and I have to loosen it and I put myself in danger of being underneath the pan. We don't want that. So what I did on the other side is I left this one and this one is the very last set of nuts that I had to remove that were holding it in place. One thing I wanted to go over with everybody, and I'm starting to see this more frequently, is that I'm running into previous repairs that held things together that I now have to deal with when I take it apart. So if the repair is not really bad, it's not really a problem. But on this one, you can see there's actually, get my light to shine. There's actually a separate wrapper sheet that they use to join the pan with the existing pan to the back of the pan. It must have rotten through at some point. So this, the other side didn't have that. So when I do this, I'm going to have to figure out exactly how that's, how that's held down. I can see in the back, it looks like there's some nuts and bolts. So that's what I'm going to go after those first. Here's a look underneath. It gives it, we get a little bit better view at the repair. Now you can see there's a set of rivet lines here with a thin piece of metal. So probably what happened was at some point this would have been damaged or needed repair and they just put this on as kind of a temporary fix. What's cool about this and kind of why I like this stuff is because this is riveted, it tells me that there's a good chance that this repair was made before welding was really widespread in the 20s, 30s, and 40s is when it really, really started to take off. So this is a pretty old repair, which I think is cool, but we're going to definitely have to address this. You can see part of the reason we restore these as in depth as we do is you can see in between this piece of metal and this piece of metal is some rust. So if you don't get this rust out, you can't paint it, you can't preserve it, and it's going to keep deteriorating until you get all of this rust out inside.
So here's an example of something that's pretty common that can happen. If you see, um, I have all the hardware underneath this cut off. There's a couple of the bolts here. But if you look over here, there's a piece of angle right here that's bolting this ash pan to the side piece. Now, if I went to drop this, I wouldn't be able to drop it because of that piece of hardware. So I have to make sure that I heat those nuts off and knock the bolts through and get them. The reason I'm gonna heat them off and I'm not gonna cut them off is because this is a square nut which was more commonly used a long time ago. They can be a little bit hard to get a hold of so I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna heat it up and, and save the square nut rather than cut it off. So I'm gonna heat them up and get them off. But. So we're just about ready to drop this ash pan down from the locomotive. There's a couple things I wanted to go over quick before we actually drop it down. So I had mentioned before that you have to, before you get everything ready to drop it, you want to make sure that all the hard bolts or nuts to cut off have already been cut off so you're not underneath something while you're doing it. So we're gonna, that's all been taken care of. All the hardware underneath has been cut off. I just have a couple nuts here that need heated and removed. Also I have a duck jack underneath to kind of catch the weight of this pan when it comes off. I'm gonna be using a pry bar and some different tools to get it off. drop the pan down, it's pretty rusty, but we'll be able to fix it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all these brackets. I'm going to do that off camera, and I'm also going to remove this wheel arch. One of the next videos coming up is going to be me fixing the insides of the wheel arch with new metal and welding in some patches for it. So stay tuned for that. Thank you for joining me and have a good one.